Okay, I just spent like legitimately 15 minutes trying to find an angle where I wasn't getting glare in my glasses and I still haven't found one, so we're just gonna do this video without my glasses. Also, before we go on, can we just have a moment of appreciation for this shirt? Like, first of all, this is beautiful, but also, Stan, meet me at the altar. So, hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video that I've never done on this channel before, mostly because I am really bad at deciding my favorite sort of things. Like, I can't really tell you what my favorite band is or what my favorite song is or what my favorite book is most of the time. Making these, like, end of the year wrap up videos where I talk about my favorite books of the year has always been sort of a struggle for me. For some reason this year I definitely feel like I read a lot of titles that stood out to me and I actually want to talk about more with you guys so I decided to put together a small little pile of my favorite reads of 2022 and I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through it. Another exciting thing that is going on in this video is that at the very end of the video I will be announcing a giveaway to celebrate 1,000 subscribers subscribers here on the channel which is still <laughs> absolutely insane to me like the fact that there are thousands of you now is just ooh boy but as a small sort of thank you to everyone I wanted to host a small giveaway so stay tuned to the end of the video to find out on how to enter and what the rules are and what the prizes are yes prizes plural but before we get to that let's talk about my favorite books of 2022 I'm still doing a lot of reflecting on what my reading journey was like, but I definitely think it was a very positive reading journey where I had a really good relationship with my reading habit. I wasn't as hard on myself as I have been in previous years, so that was really nice. And I feel like I've just started to read whatever the hell I want to read for whatever the hell reason I want to. I think I definitely read a lot more adult titles this year. I'm phasing out of reading young adult titles and reading more adult titles, which makes sense. I just turned 26 and I definitely don't connect to young adult themes and topics as much as I used to and I don't feel like I'm being fair when I'm reading and rating those books because I am so far removed from that age group. So all of that being said, I read a lot of really good adult literary fiction, horror, fantasy, pretty much everything under the sun in the adult genre and I had a great time this year. I'm going to go ahead and go through this mystery stack with you guys. There is really no order to these books. I just picked out 10 reads that I definitely know are my favorites, but they're in no particular order except for the very last one, and we'll talk about that one last. That is going to be my favorite book of the year and perhaps my favorite book of all time. So let's go ahead and start talking about these books. The first book I want to talk about is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This is adult literary fiction. I read this via audiobook. This book follows this woman as her college friend calls her up and says, Hey, could you be the nanny to my husband's ex-wife's children? We'll like pay for your room and board and everything. You can stay with us for free. The only catch is that, um, oh yeah, they catch on fire. So as you can see with the book cover here, there is a child on fire. While it seems like this book would be about the hilarity or the calamity that ensues when a child catches fire, it's actually much more about healing childhood traumas and recognizing the traumas that you had as a child in order to be a better parent or guardian to a child in your life. I thought that was so wonderful and so sweet. Like obviously I wasn't expecting that. I was just expecting to get a fun time exploring what it's like to live with children who catch on fire. But I got this incredible story and incredible introspection about how we manifest our traumas as adults and as parents and guardians and how we can change and reflect upon what we've gone through in order to be better for the children in our lives. The audiobook is so much fun. I think they're all in Texas or some southern U.S. state, so they all have accents. The kids are adorable, they're so sweet, and I really, again, just love the journey that the main character goes on. So I highly recommend this. It's definitely very much out of left field in terms of the plot and whatnot. If you're looking for a story that really tugs your heartstrings, I think this will be the story for you. The next book on this list is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. In case you missed my reading vlog of this, of, well, the end of this book, I had such a fun time with this book. This is an adult romance. It follows two authors who are contracted to co 
co-write a series of books together and it just so happens that I think the first and second book that they wrote together ended up being one of the best-selling books of that year and so they have had huge success with that one book however there was a falling out after the publication of that book and the authors don't work together anymore they're kind of like enemies the girl has retired from writing in general and then the dude just has not seen any success with his proceeding publications their literary agent devise a plan to have them fulfill the last book in their contract which is a book about a couple going through a divorce and these two are going to co-write it and finish out their contract. I loved the dynamic between these two characters. They're definitely very imperfect, very annoying, very miserable characters and there's a lot of self-sabotage that you see between these characters but when they're writing and they're working together I was just like, oh my gosh, why am I feeling so many things? Like I was just, yeah, I just, I could not get enough of this book. I read a library copy. I went out like two days later and bought a physical copy so that I could reread this on my own. I just loved this book so much. Since you see them throughout the process of writing this book and they're kind of angry banter with each other and then you know that they're finally going to like seal the deal and become a couple again, it's just so so good. I would never want to experience something like this in real life in terms of romance, but I loved reading about it. I highly recommend it if you're looking for kind of a different kind of romance that's Emily Henry adjacent, but I think much better in terms of character development and character relationships. So the next book I want to talk about is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. This is one of my most anticipated reads for a while now. Like I've been looking for a physical copy because I knew I was going to love it and as you can tell I did. This is is an adult horror thriller mystery that follows this woman many many years after her band broke up the lead singer of that band has risen to popularity while the rest of the band kind of fell off the face of the earth and the reason that he rose to popularity is because he did some shit and the rest of the band doesn't know about it only because the traumatic event that allowed him to get all of that power everyone like kind of blacked out and doesn't remember what happened that night and many many years later he's still very popular and the rest of his band kind of figures out like, hey, this dude's up to no good, we need to stop him. You guys know how much I love books about music, bands, and all that stuff. So I ate this up. I'm not a huge metal girly. I'm mostly a post-hardcore rock girly. I still vibed with this, especially since we do get to reconnect with the whole band and see their dynamic. And then we also get to see this discussion of the idea of selling your soul and how that has kind of manifested as globalization and modernization has made us very complicit when it comes to things like signing contracts or agreeing to the terms and conditions of some social media app that you're using. I just thought this was brilliant from start to finish. It was super thrilling, it was super exciting. It's kind of gory at some parts, so I definitely recommend looking up some trigger warnings if you don't do well with gore like I do. Again, despite all of the stuff that would have otherwise set me off, I enjoyed this so much. I thought it was so brilliant and this is definitely my new favorite Grady Hendrix book. The next book I want to talk about is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I feel like I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this and I need to see more people talking about this book. So this is adult historical slash literary fiction. This follows Mary Jane who is a babysitter for a little girl whose dad is a psychologist and during this summer in the 1970s the dad actually has a patient living in his home with the family and that patient just so happens to be a famous rock star and his wife who is like a model actress sort of person. And while it seems like the fact that the patient who is a rock star is going to be like the focal point of the entire book, the focal point is actually Mary Jane. So Mary Jane comes from a very conservative family and she is told exactly what to do at every single moment of the day and when she acts out of line her parents disapprove and she's very much ruled by the life of her parents. So when she meets these famous celebrities who do drugs, who drink alcohol, who go around naked, she is forced to face all of the prejudices that her parents have embedded in her and kind of see that they're wrong and they're not there's no reason 
to judge these perfectly nice people who do bad things sometimes based off of those few bad things that they do. I, I adored this story as someone who is definitely also trying to separate myself from the things that my parents taught me growing up. I just thought this was phenomenal and beautiful and everything that I think that I would have really needed, especially as I was becoming an adult, moving out of my parents' house and becoming my own person. There were so many good heartwarming moments in this book and they really make you think about like, why do I think this way? Should I challenge the way I think? Am I harming other people by the way I think? And all of that stuff. So yeah, again, highly recommend if you want a thinker and a heartwarming story. Okay, so the next book I wanna talk about is Signal the Noise by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Signal the Noise super surprised me because I just saw that there were instruments on the cover and it was a Sylvia Moreno Garcia book that I hadn't read yet. So I was like, I'm gonna like it regardless. And it has music involved. So I was really excited for it. And I was blown away by how much I enjoyed this. This is by far and away my favorite Sylvia Moreno Garcia book. If this is also your favorite Sylvia Moreno Garcia book, we are definitely kindred spirits. So this is an adult fabulism sort of urban fantasy book. It takes place in two timelines, so I think 20 years-ish earlier and then present day. We follow Meche in the past as she has adventures with her two best friends and then also Meche in the future after her father has passed away and she is kind of grappling with what has happened in the past. So the really fun part about this book that I think everyone should know going into it, amazing magical system that Meche and her friends discover and it's basically they take records or vinyls and they use the essence or the spirit of the music to give themselves powers and they use these powers to do things that I think any kid who's down on their luck would do. They want to be somewhat better looking all of a sudden or they want to have a little bit of extra pocket money to buy candy. As time goes on and they discover what all they can do, they kind of fall apart because of the powers that they have discovered as well as the friendship dynamics that are changing because they are growing older. I thought this was so much fun. I love the magic system, I love the relationship. I guess something I learned this year is that I'm kind of a sucker for second chance romance and this surprised me because I didn't think it was gonna be second chance romance, but it is, it's a really great one at that. And then just the overall exploration of what music means to us, what music can do for us. I feel like the magic system is definitely a huge metaphor for how a lot of us see music. I was just blown away by this book. I think this is phenomenal, it is like right up my alley. I don't know if it's going to be everyone's favorite, but it was certainly my favorite. There's a lot more romance on this list than I thought there would be, but I also read a lot more romance this year than before. The next book on this list is A Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is my favorite of the Brown Sisters trilogy. I read the entire trilogy this year and I really enjoyed all of the books, but Danny definitely takes the cake. This follows Danny Brown. She is a graduate student, a PhD student. She gets caught up in this social media viral moment where I think she's like rescued from a fire escape by this super hot guy who's like a jock. They start sort of fake dating because Zaf works for a company and they want good publicity and then Danny, I think she just kind of wants to which is fair. Turns out that he's a total softy. One of my favorite moments, I think at the very beginning of this book, so it's not really a spoiler, but um, Zaf actually listens to romance audiobooks and he's listening to a romance audiobook and I think it's at like the steamy part of the book when like his earbud falls out or something and then it starts playing over his phone speakers and Danny's there and she's like, uh, what you listening to? I love that so much. I think that says so much about his personality and how much of like a softy and a like just a, a different person that he is. I think that I have a lot of similarities to Danny in terms of, especially at that point in my life, I was still a grad student and I was definitely going through it like Danny was. Being able to see her kind of get transformed by this relationship and the reality of what being a grad student means uh, was just really hitting home with me. So I enjoyed this book much more than I did the other books in the series just because I had that level of relation to the main character. I highly recommend all three of these books. It just so happens that Danny's book was my favorite and I wanted to talk about it. But if you're at all interested in reading Talia Hibbert's The Brown Sisters trilogy, just go do it. It's gonna bring you serotonin. It's gonna make you happy. It's gonna make you smile. 
Diego blush highly highly recommend so the next book on this list is one true loves by taylor jenkins reed this is adult literary fiction romance sort of and it follows this woman as she falls in love with the first love of her life who either shortly before they get married or shortly after they get married he uh, gets into a helicopter crash and is declared dead so she goes back to her hometown where she lives with her parents and she also links up with an old friend, let's say. I think she had like a crush on him in high school or whatever, but they were only ever just friends. And she ends up falling in love with him too. But lo and behold, the first guy didn't actually die. He comes back and is like, hey, wife, what's up? And she's like, uh, I thought you were dead and I fell in love with someone else. And while that situation is very unrealistic, the exploration of love in various phases of your life was what really got me with this book. I had no idea who she was going to choose at the very beginning of the book because it's made very obvious that it becomes a choice between these two guys. But as the book goes along and you are following this woman through this journey, you really see how easy and clear the choice that she makes at the end is. It just made me think a lot about the loves that I've had in my life and how much of a different person I was with each relationship only because like I didn't change as a person. I was just growing up, learning how to be an adult, learning how to be myself, growing into myself. Taking all of the experiences that I had with those previous relationships into my next one, I am, you know, you're technically a different person. And that exploration and that discussion in this book, I think just really pulled the rug out from under me and made me incredibly emotional, but also really enjoy this book. I think about it very often. I don't remember the names of the characters at all, but the idea of how much you change and grow through your relationships in different phases of life, I think are just things that are good to think about, especially as I go through incredibly big changes in my life. This was a really good read for me this year with all that was going on. I recommend it if you're interested in one of Taylor Jenkins reads other books that aren't related to Daisy Jones or Evelyn Hugo. The pile is dwindling. We're getting there. The next book I want to talk about is Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Karam. This is one of the first books I read this year and I still think about it every single day. So this is the sequel to Darius the Great is Not Okay. This follows again the same main character Darius. I think this can be read as a standalone but it does reference the first book a little bit. This is YA contemporary slash literary fiction and this follows Darius after his return from his trip to Iran and kind of just like resettling back into life. He's got his first boyfriend, his sister is experiencing bullying at school because of their race. Darius is definitely still learning and growing with his depression and how it has manifested in his father versus himself. I just think that this was such a beautiful and simple story. Like, I don't think anything particularly exciting happens in the story, but the way that these topics are presented and discussed and tackled by Darius, it just tugged on my heartstrings so much, especially as someone who also has depression, it was like a warm hug. I am very sad that another Darius book hasn't gotten announced yet because I just want to, okay, sorry, my SD card ran out of space. Anyway, so yeah, I really love this book. If you're going to pick up any YA contemporaries, I definitely recommend this Darius the Great duology. I think Adib Karam has beautiful, phenomenal writing and the way that he tackles these characters and these complex situations is just chef's kiss. So the next book I want to talk about is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is Ava Reed's sophomore novel. It's an adult gothic fantasy horror-ish. This follows Marlin Chen who is kind of like the ugly sister of the family um, and she's definitely been resigned to being the maid of the house wherein like she's taking care of her father while her sisters are doing the work and getting all of the attention because they're so pretty. She has dreams of life outside of her family's home, a life outside of life that she has lived so far. And so she finds a way to kind of explore into the city and meets this guy who's I think part, he's like a ballerina? Or something a dancer a performer or something and she's kind of exposed to this life outside of what she's known and it challenges her to rethink how she wants to go about life you should definitely read the trigger warnings before going into this book because it is a gothic 
horror fantasy novel. The father is abusive. It's not a fun time for Marlon Chen. I think there was a little bit of gore in here that made me a little sick. I still love this book a lot because it brought me back to my root. When I started reading again in college, like reading on a regular basis, the genre that really got me back into reading was gothic horror, gothic fantasy gothic classic. So my favorite book of all time is The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe, which is a kind of like parody gothic satire romance also book. Those were the books that really jump-started my reading journey as an adult, but I kind of phased out of reading classics and other older books for reading more contemporary novels just because there's a lot more diversity and it's a lot more accessible in terms of the languages. All that being said, reading Juniper and Thorn brought me back. It reminded me what I love so much about gothic novels and how sort of like dark and spooky they are with all of the commentary that they make as well. The atmosphere, the vibes, the characterization, Ava Reed's writing, all of it came together and was just such a wonderful experience. I had just had COVID before I read this book and this made me feel just like reinvigorated with life. If you're looking for something a little different in the adult fantasy genre to try out, I highly recommend Juniper and Thorn. Just check out the trigger warnings and all that good stuff before you do. The last book I'm going to talk about is going to be my favorite read of the year and one of my favorite reads of all time, undoubtedly, and that is Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kavai Strong Washburn. This is an adult literary slash historical fiction. So this follows a family in Hawaii after their son falls off of a boat into the water and he is brought back to his family in the jaws of a shark unharmed. This kind of blesses him with powers that I won't go into because it's kind of spoilery. The majority of the book actually does not follow Nainoa and what happens to him after the shark return, but instead what happens to the family and the family dynamics and how everything changes after this event. This talks about so many amazing things from being a Hawaii diaspora child and going to the mainland for school to the cultural significance of some things like Nainoa's powers and how that manifests. I feel very stupid for not having read this earlier, especially because I lived in Hawaii and I saw this title everywhere and I just never picked it up for some reason. And I finally picked it up when I moved to the mainland and now it's one of my favorite books of all time. Beautiful, beautiful story, a beautiful exploration of something that is very unusual, but the most important thing that came out of that is the way that the family was affected by it. I think this hit home a little more than it would for the average person because I have lived in Hawaii for so long and I, I dedicated a lot of my studies learning about Native Hawaiian culture and customs. But I think that regardless of your knowledge level of Hawaii, I think that you're gonna really love this book just because it's such a beautiful moving story. Yeah, if you're looking for a good literary fiction by a Native Hawaiian author, really move you and make you think and will teach you so much about Hawaii and its culture. I highly recommend this book. I cannot sing enough praises for it. Again, this is one of my favorite books of all time now and I'm so happy to have finally read it. Okay, so with all of that boring stuff out of the way, I now get to talk to you guys about the little giveaway that I will be hosting. I will be doing a giveaway under this video. So I will be choosing two subscribers who comment under this video to win either a JetPens gift card, JetPens is a stationary site, or a Books of Wonder gift card. Books of Wonder is an indie online bookstore. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment down below your favorite book of the year. Also, please in your comment leave either your Instagram or Twitter handle. I would like a way to contact you guys that is not via YouTube just because I don't really think that there's a reliable DM system. So please leave either your Instagram or Twitter below so that I can contact you on those platforms if you are a winner. Only one entry per person, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel just because i don't really know how this works and i don't want to get in trouble with anyone please only enter if you're above the age of 18 because you will be sharing personal information with me i don't want to have to contact any minors and get into that stuff so unfortunately this will be for people 18 and above only and i will also have this giveaway open international so regardless of where you're located, you are welcome to enter. If Jet Pens or Books of Wonder does not ship to your country, you and I will work out a way to get your giveaway prize 
uh, somehow, some way. So I'm gonna try and close this giveaway January 31st at 9 a.m. my time. So you guys have tons of time to enter. If you have any other questions or comments about the giveaway, feel free to leave them below and I will try and answer them as quickly as possible. Otherwise, best of luck to all of you and I'm so excited to be able to do this. And again, I'm so super thankful that there are a thousand of you now. So that's all that I have for you today. I mean, that was a lot of content. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry if I didn't make eye contact with the camera all the time. I literally can barely see it. I hope you still enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.